The suicide watch COVID conundrum in prison. What do I mean? Let's go. Kate Ruggs, the Sober Dog, coming at you. If you want to help Sober Dogs out, hit that subscribe, share the videos, check out our shirts, whatever, Patreon, whatever people can do. And if you can't, just keep watching. I love you guys. Thanks for the support. There is this common thing within prison where it's almost like, I don't want to say the example of cry wolf. And uh, for those who don't know it, you know, it, 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 the story goes, the boy who, you know, runs back to town and says, there's a wolf, there's a wolf and scares everybody. Just kidding. Second time, there's a wolf. I need help. Just kidding. Second time, third time. And then the fourth time, there really is a wolf and he really needs help. And he's crying, come help, come help. And everyone's like, yeah, you're going to get us with that trick again. And, you know, he gets eaten. What I mean by that is when I was in, and especially in solitary, if you even mention anything about killing yourself, whether you're being dead serious, whether you're just venting, letting off steam, whether you want attention or you're doing it for a, pulling a stunt, you know, they call it. Some guys will, you know, intentionally say, I want to kill myself, go to suicide watch and get their mental health level raised with the hope that they can either get put on stronger meds, get some, some solitary time cut off or get transferred to a new prison that's a higher mental health level. Whatever the reason, when you even touch that subject, it's like mandatory, the guards gotta, they can't take their eye off you, they gotta call in the backup, they gotta escort you out, and they put you in suicide watch for three days. Suicide watch sucks. My solitary cell was me on a bed with a blanket and two sheets and a pillow and two pair of, of prison uniform and five books and a little shower in the back of the cell and a sink. Brutal sucks. You don't realize what you have until it's gone. When I got put in suicide watch, they rip you out of there, put you in this cold other cell. It's got a, the bars, normal bars on it, and then it's got a glass, um, like a plexiglass thing. On the outside is a stool and a guard that sits there 24 seven watching you. In the cell is nothing. You have this like little air foam suicide proof mattress. They take all your clothes and put you in this paper gown and they're real selective on like if they give you sheets or blankets and if they do they're usually those real thin paper sheets that you know can rip which on a total side note is how i know 1000 percent that jeffrey epstein did not kill himself i've been in a cell with those sheets no way did he hang himself with those sheets back to the story you are sitting in here and whether again whatever reason you went on suicide watch regardless you realize like, shit, this sucks five times as bad as solitary, which sucks worse than anything. So it's almost this incentive. There was multiple times I was suicidal and I wanted to bring it up to the therapist, the psychologist, somebody to talk about it, but I didn't because I knew what would happen. I'd get ripped into that cell and have to spend three days on this cold concrete floor without books, without anything. You gotta ask the guard for a jug. He gives you a jug to pee in and they give you this pan to poop in because they turn the toilet and the water off in many cases. It's just humiliating. If they do leave the water on, you poop and pee, anything right in front of a guard watching you 24 seven. When you wanna drink a water, the guard gives you a cup and stands there and watch, turns the water on, watches you as you fill it and drink and fill it and drink. And when you're done, you got to give him the cup back and they turn the water off again. It's just humiliating. Why I bring that up with COVID too, COVID is now the same thing in a different way. So their only answer response in prison to COVID is, of, you know, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but is isolate the person that's quote sick or was near somebody who was sick but all they have for isolation is solitary. So when I was in, if you went to the nurse and said, I'm sick, I got the cold, I got a flu, they gave you meds, they put you on bed rest, you're in your still your same bed or your same cell and you don't go to work for two or three days and they might take away your outside privileges so you're not with too many people, but you're still in your own bed. You could still go to the bathroom, you could still have your books. If you, you're in a prison with TVs, you could have your TV, blah, blah, blah. Now, if guys say they're sick, boom, it's quarantine. What is quarantine? Solitary. Why the hell would I ever tell the nurse the truth that I'm sick when I know the answer to that is I'm gonna be punished because I'm sick. That's not their intention is to punish, but that's how they made it happen. So I'm sick and you're gonna send me to solitary for 14 or 10 days. Why would I ever say anything? And I've talked to a lot of guys who have been in during COVID, some who still are, 
well, you know, I've written with and talked on the phone, some who've gotten out, who said I was with guys who were violently ill. It was clear as day they had COVID. And because they knew what was going to happen, they didn't say anything, and nor do I blame them. And they're going about their daily life doing whatever they have to do. And what is that doing? Spreading it to everybody else. I would have done the exact same damn thing. I'm not going to solitary for 15 days. Nope, not happening. But who knows who's getting sick because of it. And that's what sucks. And I know there's better ways they could figure this out. You know, there's even if you let them take their property to solitary, at least some of it, it would have made it better. You let them have their books and their TV or something. But no, it's basically like you're punished for either being suicidal or being sick. And it's so ass backwards. And then as far as in the suicide case, all that happens is after three days, the doctor comes and asks you a couple questions. And if you play the game and answer them right, you go back to your cell. If you play the game and answer them, I'm still suicidal, they give you another day or two. And it just is this. But there's no actual help. There's no, okay, what, you know, what's going on? You know, they might give you an extra appointment, but they have very limited resources and nobody's really there. I had a couple of counselors, you know, mental health counselors and therapists who genuinely were great people trying to help, but they are so, their hands are so tied with bullshit bureaucracy that's got to get approved through 500 layers of idiots that don't know what they're doing, that they can't actually do anything to help. All they could do is sit there and talk to you for an hour or a half hour, whatever your appointment is. But to actually do anything helpful in whatever the situation may be has got to get approved by a thousand people who have never stepped foot in a prison, who, have, who aren't there. And it's just this stupid circle that they're, they're just going to keep getting themselves more and more and more problems. You know, like with COVID in there, yeah, isolating somebody, you know, for 14 days in solitary might stop a little bit of the COVID spread, but it also then creates a monster mental health problem with that person who's going to be more violent, more agitated, more pissed off, come back in the dorm and spread that to whatever extent when they're fighting more, when they're yelling more, when they're causing more issues, when they're depressed more. All these things haven't been looked at and need to be looked at. What has COVID caused non-COVID related? Not the person getting sick from it, but all the surrounding shit with isolation and lockdown and do this and go there and no facial expressions and a lot of shit to go along with it. Let me know what you think in the comments. K Ruggs, The Sober Dog, and I'm out. See ya.